Tonight, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov with a chilling warning. The risk of nuclear war is a real one. Speaking to state-run media, Lavrov said, quote, the danger is serious, it is real, it cannot be underestimated. Tesla down 12% during Tuesday's session. That's the biggest drop since September 2020. fear is that when it becomes abundantly clear that all of these discussions about the uh, collapsing Russian army and the great victorious Ukrainians fall apart, that then people really will say, well, we've got to do something, or we in Washington who've made all these ridiculous claims will look ridiculous yet again. Ah. That worries me. Are you talking about a food shortage crisis where Americans are not going to have access to food? We are on the precipice of a global food crisis. It's a very tight balance. And if we interrupt sure. the food production, we will have a food crisis. Prices will go through the roof. The White House is threatening the Solomon Islands. This is a small Pacific nation that is becoming the new flashpoint between China and the West. But Washington says it will retaliate if China sets up a military base in the Pacific. In Australia, the defense minister said they should prepare for war. If someone intervenes in events from the outside, this will create strategic threats that are unacceptable for us. They should know that our response to counter strikes will be immediate and quick. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So guys, you've seen the Super Cup. You know how serious the situation is. I shouldn't need to reiterate that. But we've reached an inflection point with this war. The war is on the cusp of spreading beyond the borders of Ukraine. And it's primarily because what you have right now are all the belligerents involved do not want to make any concessions and they won't make any concessions. The U.S. won't yield. The Russians won't yield. They're all steadfast in their, their goals. And the Russian goal is to ensure that uh, NATO never gets a foothold in Ukraine. And the U.S. goal is to destroy Russia. Or not destroy Russia, maybe not you know, physically, but destroy them economically. And that, of course, is a, constitutes a threat, an existential threat to the Russian existence. And for them that is grounds to start to use their nuclear weapons. It is what it is. It's written in their constitution, okay? So the panic is going to start soon. I'm just forewarning you that people are going to start to take notice of what's going on. It's going to become undeniable. The market knows it. The market's known it for the last month. I mean, the markets are just being devastated left and right. Uh, stocks are falling. Even Google is not doing that well. And... Uh, that's a good canary in the coal mine of the market as a whole. Tesla, of course, is down because of the whole Twitter thing. You know, where's Elon going to get this money? Well, I, I, I actually think that, you know, there'll still be enough uh, fanaticism and gas in, in that whole tank for that to maybe go a little bit further. But uh, I think that that could be coming to an end soon, Sue, because we know that there's going to be a decoupling between China and the United States as a result of what is going on in the Solomon Islands. And because Tesla has a factory in, uh, is it Beijing? I can't remember exactly where they have the, their uh, plant there. Uh, I think that stock is in for a shock as well. So we have a few things to talk about now. The U.S. military is starting to have a larger presence in Ukraine, an actual physical presence in some way, shape or form. Uh, Blinken, or was it John, was his name John Adams? I can't remember. One of those guys today was in a press conference. He was talking about how when these diplomats go over there, they need to be accompanied by, 
you know, various personnel, security personnel. And as a result of that, you're having a potential for more contact points between Russian forces and American forces, even though they're frequenting places which are not commonly accessed or targeted by Russian forces like Kiev currently, that could all change. So the risk factors are much, much higher. Now, we all seen the uh, nuclear rhetoric thrown around by Lavrov and Putin, which is intensifying. I'm also noticing a much more anxious tone in terms of the top brass and political elite in Russia when they when they're giving when he's giving these speeches to them and the camera pans to them you can see you know the same kind of nervousness that um we seen at the at the start of this thing the same nervousness that we seen in the uh, higher elites in Belarus when Belarus pledged their you know commitment to the Russian uh war effort and uh that's that's kind of unsettling to me because that means that I think all sides are starting to get a little anxious and desperate at this point. And that means that accidents can happen. And of course, that's coming across in more and more aggressive language, not just from the Russians, but also the Chinese who have now referred to in the last 24 hours have referred to the USA as the devil and uh, rightly commented on the hypocrisy of the whole um U.S. trying to get involved in the Solomon Islands, you know, foreign affairs, you know, halfway across the world, this country and making these red lines and speaking on behalf of, you know, Australia, it, it, it's very hypocritical when you think about it, because that's the exact same concern that Russia has with Ukraine. And uh, of course, they have a history with Nazism and all this stuff, a very extensive history. And they, for whatever reason, they're, they're you know, this is how they think, right? They, they're they concerned about that. That's a national security threat for them, and which is understandable in a lot of ways. And, um, and I'm not saying that all of Ukraine, obviously, you know, is of that belief by a long shot. Only a small minority is. But that's how they're viewing it anyways, okay? And so with this Solomon Island issue, if you don't know, it's a, a chain of islands that's just northeast of Australia. And uh, the Chinese government wants to build a military base there. And of course, this is not being seen well by the Australians who have essentially created a red line and said that they will have to go to war over this particular issue. And for them, of course, you know, they're, they're basically in the Russians in this situation, right? You have this enemy who's at your gates. And that was the Russian situation where they felt that NATO was at their doorstep with Ukraine. So now the you know, the roles are kind of reversed and the Chinese are, are becoming incredibly more aggressive in their tone and more cantankerous and belligerent towards the U.S. And uh, that's not good because that means that that war theater or at least the breakdown of relations. First, it's going to start with trade relations. We're starting to see, you know, the, the lockdowns start to hurt the U.S. economy again. And somebody made a comment recently just a passing comment about how the lockdowns are a way to not only potentially pacify Chinese opposition within the country and I don't know how strong that really is you know I don't know if the CCP is really facing a significant amount of, of resistance that they couldn't easily stomp out like I think they're a long way away from a revolution in that country but I could be wrong right because sometimes in extreme environments extreme unpredictable things can happen but that it's also a way to prevent you know the flow of goods uh, into the U.S. because of course when they have to lock down they got to slow down business and this is going to hurt trade with the U.S. and it's going to increase supply chain issues uh, over here so that it's some sort of underhanded way to at once stomp out your your potential rivals and uh you know, make the U.S. feel the pain as well, and maybe a run-up to the decoupling of China and the United States. Now, guys, if that happens, I've said before, the market is in for the biggest shock of your life, the biggest shock of your life. You already have Israel starting to look to the yuan and buying yuan as a reserve currency. 
other countries are going to follow in suit, especially if a country like Israel does it, you know that other countries are going to start to follow in suit. And the writing is going to be on the wall for that. Now, the biggest story is the last 48 hours. One of the biggest was um, Russian, <laughs> Russian uh, firm not supplying gas to Poland and Bulgaria, which is huge. This is a big, big problem. Maybe not so much in summertime, but it's a big, big problem. And I think the Russians knew that, that, okay, we're going to do this during the summer and, you know, give them some time to think about it, whether or not they want to pay in rubles. And then come wintertime, you know, the, the tone might change when people start essentially freezing to death in their homes or paying exorbitant amounts just to heat their homes uh, when the economies in those countries starts to suffer. Okay, so, wow, where to start here? Okay, so Putin promises a lightning response to strategic threats to Russia. President warns that Russia won't hesitate to use weapons that no other country possesses to defend itself. Well, I can only think of a, a few weapons that Russia possesses that other countries don't have an equivalent to, and that would be the, the Satan II uh, uh, inter continental ballistic missile which can that has a much greater distance has uh hypersonic re-entry vehicles and can yeah and can cause a lot of damage like it can deliver a a massive wallop okay and of course there's the hypersonic missiles as well that he could be referring to russian president vladimir putin has warned outside forces interfering in ukraine promise a lightning speed response if someone decides to intervene putin said in the ongoing events from the outside and create acceptable strategic threats to us they should know that our response to those oncoming blows will be swift and lightning fast we have all the tools to do this, tools that no one except us can brag about, but we're not going to brag. We'll use them if such a need arises. The president said without specifying which tools could be deployed. And um, obviously we know that the West has been actively supplying Kiev with weapons. Germany now sending tanks, anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, there's potential talk about Romania allowing Ukraine to use it as a staging ground for their their air force and uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute and that's pure speculation at this point based from you know some questionable sources but more often than, need, than not these questionable sources appear to be right because you remember there's a lot of secrets in in war and uh, it's very hard for these things to, to get officially talked about in the media okay um now what else do we got going on here so we'll save the solomon island stuff for the end yes so this is the thing i wanted to talk to you guys about so this is very very significant because we know that as we talked about a few days ago the transnistria a breakaway republic of moldova which is russian backed is it kind of uh, creates a bit of a a, a land border between Moldova and the rest of Ukraine. And this is a pro-Russian uh, part neck of the woods, if you will. And this, of course, allows them to have a staging ground to attack places like Odessa or even go in to Moldova. And the, the word on the street is, is that the Romanians are helping the Moldovans prepare for war with Russia on that front. Now, again, this is None of this is official, but just take it for what it's worth because pretty much everything we've talked about in this channel has been coming true based on the sources that I've been getting over the last two months. So I'm not, at this point, I'm almost, I can almost 99% guarantee that something's going to pop off there in the near future. As early as March 6th, the Defense Ministry of the Russian Federation officially announced that virtually all of Kiev's Air Force had been destroyed. And this is not surprising, guys. You know, I mean, a lot of these planes are going to be parked. They're going to, you know, take them out with missiles. Um, their air defense is superior. They're going to knock them out of the sky. And this is not at all surprising that, you know, I, I, I don't doubt what they're saying here. Maybe they're, they're exaggerating a little bit. But for the most part, I think that at least on paper, uh, the Russians should have had no problem doing that. According to the daily reports, however, of the Russian military defense, until the beginning of April, if something destroyed our air defense 
in the sky over Ukraine, it was almost exclusively reconnaissance and impact drones, less often combat and transport helicopters. But suddenly, from the beginning of April, this changed. A timeline of battles in the skies of Ukraine until then is as follows. And I'm not going to talk about all these, but they provide numerous examples of things like on April 8th, Russian air defense shot down a Ukrainian Su-27 fighter. Uh, on April 11th, they shot down an Su-27. 25 fighter and one thing you need to know just as a sidebar is that i'm seeing a lot of videos that are claiming that ukrainians are targeting these uh, different types of equipment but the fact is they're all using the same type of equipment so you never know whose equipment you're seeing like i seen a video yesterday on the sun which showed apparently one guy taking out four tanks Okay, and these tanks were they they looked abandoned. Like they didn't look there was like there's anybody in them. There was no uh fire back, there was no, you know, <laughs> people running from the vehicles or anything like that. So we really have to be very suspect of what we're seeing nowadays because there's a lot of propaganda that's being used to try to keep people fighting, okay? Um and anyways, they go on and on. Uh, every day there's more planes that are being shot down. Then after April 19th, there was a secession of activities of the Ukrainian Air Force. This then changed and Ukraine aircraft reappeared more dynamically and with more numbers in the skies of Ukraine. The route of Ukraine aircraft. Very important. Pay attention to this. Ukraine in almost a mythical way suddenly resurrected. The question is where and who is preparing the resurrected fighters for flights today, if almost all of the airports in Ukraine have been hit for such a long time? Where do the rockets and the bombs that carry the fighters under the wings every day come from? From which subsoil do they draw tons of fuel for fight flights that have not stopped in the last two weeks? On April 19th, Pen Pentagon spokesman John Kirby, that was the guy who was in the press conference today, said in an, a statement that Ukrainian forces now have more fighter jets at their disposal than two weeks ago. Where does all this come from? Well, of course, it comes from NATO countries. There is reason to believe that new Ukrainian aircraft are not based in Ukraine at all. It is said that Romania has become their current home. Now, this is just based on this mostly impartial news source, okay? From there, which has typically been almost 100% right, from there, one or more of the airports, Ukrainian pilots take off to strike Russian troops. Then they return there if they were lucky enough to survive after completing their mission. Because as we all know, Russians do have some of the most advanced surface-to-air missiles out there. The itineraries of such flights are said to be about the same. Initially, in order not to be detected by the radar facilities by the Russian armed forces, they fly at extremely low altitudes over Black Sea to Odessa, and from there in the direction of Nikolev Donetsk. Um, I can't pronounce that one, and I can't pronounce that other one, so I'm not going to bother. Now, this is why we're starting to see this intensification, because they think... They think that they that the Romanians are um, allowing the Ukrainians to use it as a staging ground. And if that's true, then that means that this war is about to, to get hot. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. Okay, uh, let's talk about the other front real quick because I don't have much time. Guys, we're in the middle of moving a warehouses. That's why you haven't seen too many blue strip high production videos even the communist cameraman is working in the warehouse right now we're trying to get people their orders as quickly as possible we were in a place which was too small we could not meet the needs of our customers in terms of customer service and just uh, getting things out expeditiously so we had to take a break move into a new space I promise you that all the gear that you've ordered will get there. There's just a slight delay right now. Now, in terms of the supply chain, um, we're still seeing huge delays, particularly with freeze-dried food, uh, personal protective equipment. We do have some inventory, but we're in no hurry to get rid of it because it's uh, within the next month or so, the, the panic is going to start. Uh, so I would just encourage you to get your gear while you can. Get, get all that aside. Enjoy your summer, enjoy life, but just prepare for things to go bananas real quick. And the market knows it, and uh, yeah. So 
Okay, so United States is threatening China and the Solomon Islands with military action. A senior U.S. official in the Pacific has refused to rule out military action against the Solomon Islands if it allows China to set up a military base there, saying the security pact had potential regional implications for the United States and its allies. Now, this is the contradiction, right? This is the contradiction for the Chinese with the Americans and the whole Russian Ukraine situation, because it's the exact same thing, only in a different place. And the, the shoes are reversed. Okay. But at this stage, and given that the Island Solomon uh, China security treaty has been signed, military action is also being directed against Beijing itself. U S ambassador Daniel Crittenbrink has said the United States and Australia do not rule up military action against China. If they pursue a plan to build a military facility in the Solomon islands, following the signing of a security, Security agreement, which means we are starting to see the Eastern Theater open up. Now, of course, the U.S. says we respect the sovereignty of the Solomon Islands, but we also wanted to inform them that the steps were taken to establish a de facto permanent military presence, capabilities, or military installations. Then we would have significant concerns, and of course, we would respond to those concerns. So, very ambiguous language being used there, right? And they also go on to say that they believe that China and Russia are the Germany of the 1930s. And this is coming from uh, Australia, the Australian government, who have some pretty heavy words for the Chinese. Specifically, Australian Defense, Defense Minister Peter Dutton referred to the ghost of Nazi Germany, stating that Australia can maintain peace only in preparation for war. There will be a conflict in our area, he said, and it's not far off. This is according to to Defense Minister Peter Dutton. He says there will be a conflict in our area and it's not far. And remember, the Australians are trying to crank out these nuclear powered submarines, which are likely probably going to have nukes on them, I would imagine. I, I imagine that they're they're prepping themselves to to get some nukes. The only way to keep the peace is to prepare for war and be a strong be a strong country, not to bend over or be weak. This is the reality. When asked about the lessons offered by Anzac Day, Dustin warned that the Dutton warned that the prospect of a conflict is not far off. Okay, so and they they have a day that they uh, celebrate a uh, holiday. It's an Anzac Day. So guys, uh, Supercut says it all. That's pretty much all I got for you today. You know, just uh, keep your eye on the ball, stay vigilant, and keep on prepping. And let me know what you're seeing in your neck of woods. Are you seeing food shortages? Are you seeing uh, an increased concern about the, the situation uh, on the Western Front, our Western Front, Russia, Ukrainian Front? Are you seeing that at all? Or do people just, you know, are they remaining oblivious to it all? <laughs> are you starting to, or is your portfolio starting to suffer with respect to the the stock market issues that have been happening. Let me know how you're doing in the comment section below. And uh, we we are going to have some much more, you know, actionable content for you in the coming weeks ahead. And we may even be back with Full Spectrum, uh, the Urban Prepper and City Prepping for our other Think Preparedness YouTube channel. We've all been very busy and uh, we haven't been able to, to do that one as well. But we are going to be doing these things with greater frequency moving forward. I promise you. And I do promise that the proper news is coming soon as well, as well as many guests on the channel. So thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. You take care. Canadian Prepper out.